Hello and welcome to the Malaika Rights channel. My name is Malaika Rights and today we are going to be talking about something I found recently on Netflix. I am very behind the curve when it comes to watching anything on Netflix or just watching anything online in general but I was scrolling through my Netflix the other day and I came across The Witcher. Now The Witcher is nothing new to practically everybody who doesn't, like me, live under a rock and so this should be no news. So I clicked on it because I thought, okay, I haven't watched anything recently and um, I'm looking for my hit of gruesome fantasy as a fan of Berserk. The Witcher seems right up my alley. But then I noticed the description that Netflix had decided to give The Witcher, comparing it to Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings simultaneously. Now, to anyone else who has a life, this description is sort of self-explanatory. It basically means that um, The Witcher has elements of high fantasy like uh, the Lord of the Rings but it also has elements of hyper realism like Game of Thrones but to people like me that comparison sparked my interest. Needless to say I didn't actually watch The Witcher that evening I went and started typing up a script for this video. So <laughs> that thought process is the result that you guys are currently listening to so let me talk you through why I think such a comparison between The Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones is a very sort of tricky one to make. I understand why that comparison was made in reference to The Witcher. Like I just explained it's supposed to mean that it has that The Witcher has the high fantasy element but it also has the realism of Game of Thrones. However, there is a fundamental reason why that explanation doesn't really work, why the comparison is doesn't work. The main thing is that it comes down to do these two things. The Lord of the Rings is escapism, fundamentally. In order for Tolkien to write a story that was not allegory and for him to create such a world with its rules and systems and um, its complexities without making it an allegory of the real world that he lived in while also drawing on some of his own experiences of being a soldier in war you know, and of being in love, you know, calling his wife Luthien all of these things that he drew from real life, in order for him to put that into a story and it not to be allegory, he goes through the escapism route, which is, which tells the reader to suspend their disbelief and to remove all connections from the real world and allow Tolkien to immerse them in a world that he has created. So that is where we come to, that's where we're coming from when we look at Tolkien's work. Now, escapism functions by its, on its own sort of rules, whereas realism functions with its own set of rules. When we look at Tolkien's work, a lot of world building goes into it because Tolkien is trying to establish um, his world that he's created. He's trying to establish his little pocket in the Fey Realm. I did a whole series on the Fey Realm. Uh, you guys can check that out. But basically he is trying to create a world in which he is the one that defines all the rules and nothing can be assumed because even though it, ha it bears similarities to our world, it is fundamentally different because he even gives it its own origin story. By giving it an origin story, he creates the very foundation on which his world rests. Therefore, everything within it is something that he can either explain or something that he himself has constructed. That's the fundamentals of escapism. Now, realism, on the other hand, takes a lot of elements from our real world and actually goes 
a little bit into the realm of allegory because we can see parallels and we can make assumptions that the, one of the big differences between escapism and realism is that in realism we can make assumptions about what this world functions off because it is influenced a lot by our real world um george r, r. martin actually took the war of the roses to create to influence the conflict in his um in his novels the race for the or the 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 battles for the iron throne are influenced by the war of the roses which was an actual historical fact so a lot of what is happening in game of thrones is influenced by real life and it also the rules of that world are heavily taken from real life unlike the lord of the rings where sort of sexual nudity scenes aren't really a thing yes it does have its level of gore and it's it doesn't shy away from uh problematic subject matter um hashtag turin and his sister but um it doesn't go into the gory details whereas game of thrones is very gritty it's very real it's very much based in real life well, whereas we don't have to worry about Aragorn's tax policy in The Lord of the Rings, we have to worry about um, the tax policy in Game of Thrones because it influences the world. It's it's very it's a different kind of story. It's supposed to be written as though it could actually have happened in our reality. Of course, there are the fantasy elements like dragons but dragons aren't sentient creatures like they are. dragons are very much um beasts like lions and other creatures they don't have a, a sort of they don't have reasoning like we do they can't communicate with us they don't have magic and so the magic systems that are in game of thrones versus the magic systems are in lord of the rings while they are a little bit similar because Lord of the Rings is not Harry Potter, they're not doing outlandish things. And um, in Game of Thrones, they try to keep the magic very grounded, but they're two different magic systems. You know, in Game of Thrones, they're fighting a beast like creature that's not sentient, that doesn't have reason of its own past that of an animal. Um, so, dragons, things like that. They have the shadow creatures that gets into a little bit more of the high fantasy uh, realm, but they're not fighting Balrogs. <laughs> so it's um, very, they operate on two different sort of rules. That brings us back to the point of why I say the comparison is very tricky to be made, and I don't think it can be made, because the fundamentals of both books are so vastly different. Escapism and realism are complete opposites. Escapism is devoid of the rules of reality. Anything is possible, things can happen. Realism falls under the rules of consequence, where if something happens, it has to be hyper realistic. And so the comparison that was made as a sort of uh, as a sort of way to tell the, the watcher what they were going to, to get if they watched The Witcher. Um, I understand it on a surface level, but once you get past that surface, if you decide to think a little bit deeply, it's not a comparison that can be made, especially if you um, are aware of what these two books are. In fact, George R. R. Martin actually criticised The Lord of the Rings, saying that, talking about Aragorn's tax policy, but the point is, we don't need to know that because it's escapism. It doesn't matter. We can just assume that by being a good person, he's going to be a good king. That's obviously not the case in a realist work because that's not how life works. You can be a great person. Doesn't mean you know anything about economics. So those are the two differences. And I just decided to make this video because... I overthink and you guys just get to listen to me overthink but I hope you've enjoyed this thought process let me know what you think um, and hopefully I'm going to give The Witcher an actual try when I have 
the time if it's something that you enjoyed let me know if it's something that um you think i shouldn't bother with let me know i'm actually looking for something to entertain myself with and i would like suggestions so thank you very much for watching this video this has been the malaika rights channel i hope you have a lovely day